cheese, lettuce, and hot grilled pineapple. For a limited time, the McLobster sandwich is ashore at McDonald's. Filled with their tasty bite-sized pieces of sweet onion deep fried to a golden brown. McDonald's has pioneered in introducing iconic menu items synonymous with the brand. From the classic McLobster to the addictive allure of Chicken McNuggets, the Golden Arches have undoubtedly left an indelible mark on global cuisine. However, behind the successes and long-standing favorites exist a realm of peculiar and unexpected culinary experiments that once graced McDonald's menus but have since vanished into obscurity. Join us as we look at 13 weird McDonald's menu items that have disappeared. McDonald's Golden you get beef, cheese, lettuce, and hot grilled pineapple. In 1962, McDonald's took a daring leap into vegetarian offerings by unveiling the Hula Burger. Now, this wasn't your typical fast food creation. Instead of the usual beef patty, the Hula Burger showcased a grilled pineapple slice as its star ingredient. Priced at around 45 cents, this tropical twist aimed to satisfy those cravings for a meat-free alternative. For those who remember the 60s, the Hula Burger was quite the unconventional addition to the menu. The idea was to cater to various dietary preferences, adding a touch of the exotic to McDonald's offerings. But here's the plot twist. Despite its innovative approach, the Hula Burger faced a tough time winning the hearts of the meat-loving American public. The concept of swapping out the iconic beef patty for a slice of pineapple was too much for the predominantly carnivorous customer base. The Hula Burger struggled to find its place in a world where burgers meant beef. As a result, this vegetarian pioneer had a relatively short stint on the menu and eventually made way for more familiar and conventional items. Was the Hula Burger the only peculiar creation that failed to capture the hearts of McDonald's enthusiasts? Well, let's find out. This is one sandwich that's bound to please everyone. Well, almost everyone. McDonald's threw everyone for a loop by unveiling the McLobster in 1993, a lobster roll sandwich that hit the menu for a limited time. Priced at around $5.99, this unexpected addition featured Atlantic lobster mixed with mayonnaise, diced celery, and a hint of lemon, all snugly nestled in a soft roll. Imagine walking into McDonald's expecting your usual burger and fries, only to be met with the McLobster, a seafood twist in the fast food tail. It was like McDonald's detoured the world of ocean flavors. For those of us who've seen a bit more of the calendar, the McLobster was a move by McDonald's to reel in seafood enthusiasts and offer a touch of luxury in the fast food lineup. Initially, it was available in specific locations, adding exclusivity to the experience. However, the McLobster's time in the spotlight was short-lived. Ensuring every McDonald's across the nation served up lobster of the same quality was quite the challenge. Handling and preparing lobster with all its intricacies posed logistical hurdles making it tough to guarantee a consistent experience for everyone sinking their teeth into the McLobster. Looking back, it makes you wonder, could the McLobster have stood the test of time with advancements in supply chain magic? Or was it simply too tricky to turn a regional delicacy into a globally consistent fast food sensation? Now's the time to head to McDonald's for crisp, cool McSalad shakers. Just pour on your favorite dressing. In the year of 2000, McDonald's took a bold step into the world of salads with the launch of McSalad shakers. It was a cup filled with fresh greens, grilled or crispy chicken, and a dressing. But here's the twist. You were meant to shake it up, giving you a mess-free salad experience on the go. All of this innovation was priced at around $3.99. This McSalad Shakers thing was McDonald's attempt at making salads more fun and convenient. You'd grab your cup and give it a good shake to mix everything up. No need to worry about a fork and knife. It was like a salad in a cup designed for the hustle and bustle of our fast-paced lives. But, as intriguing as the concept was, McSalad Shakers didn't quite stick around for the long haul. Why? Well, turns out that making and serving these shaken salads had its fair share of challenges. Imagine evenly distributing the dressing throughout the salad while ensuring everything stays fresh, especially in the rush of a fast food setting. It wasn't as easy as flipping a burger. And you know how it is. Sometimes, even if an idea is brilliant, the world might not be ready. McSalad shakers might have been too much of a departure from the usual salad routine at a fast food joint for folks at that time.
1979, McDonald's took everyone by surprise with a culinary twist. The introduction of mixed spaghetti, priced at around $1.99. Picture this, a plate of spaghetti covered in the classic McDonald's marinara sauce. It was like the fast food giant decided to trade the iconic burger and fries for an Italian culinary adventure, raising a few eyebrows among customers who associated McDonald's with its traditional fast food fare. Despite the initial intrigue, mixed spaghetti had its share of hurdles in becoming a staple for those looking for a quick and satisfying meal. In a world where burgers and fries ruled, sitting down with a plate of spaghetti felt a bit out of place. The convenience of grabbing a handheld burger clashed with the more utensil-dependent dining experience that mixed spaghetti brought to the table. Then there was the pricing puzzle. At $1.99, mixed spaghetti was competitive, but it didn't quite match the perceived value that customers expected from McDonald's. The affordability that drew people in for the classic items didn't seamlessly translate to a more elaborate dish like spaghetti. This misalignment in pricing might have played a role in mixed spaghetti's limited success and eventual removal from the menu. And let's not forget the challenge of maintaining quality and consistency with a pasta dish across the vast network of McDonald's locations. Fast food success relies on everything being the same everywhere you go, and adding a non-traditional item like mixed spaghetti might have thrown a curveball into the system. Were you aware that alongside the mixed spaghetti's disappearance, the onion nuggets also took an unexpected exit from the McDonald's menu? Onion bits. They're tasty bite-sized pieces of sweet onion deep fried to a golden brown. Let's take a groovy trip back to the 1970s when McDonald's spiced things up with onion nuggets. These little bites were like the disco stars of the culinary world, stealing the show before the iconic Chicken McNuggets took the stage. Imagine this. It's the era of bell bottoms and funky beats, and fast food joints are getting wild with their offerings. Onion Nuggets is a quirky creation featuring diced onions, breaded and fried until they hit that golden sweet spot. They were like the rebellious offspring of the traditional menu, adding a crunchy and flavorful twist to the scene. Back then, you could snag a small serving of these onion nuggets for a mere 25 cents, a steal for a snack that brought a lot of funk to your taste buds. McDonald's, always keeping it real with affordability, ensured everyone could taste the 70s flavor without burning a hole in their pocket. The public's reaction to onion nuggets was a bit of a mixed bag. Some people were about that crispy texture and savory goodness, while others stuck to their tried and true burgers and fries. Even though onion nuggets paved the way for the McNugget phenomenon we know today, they didn't quite reach the same level of stardom. As the 70s danced their way into the 80s, McDonald's decided to bid farewell to onion nuggets. The reasons are a bit fuzzy. Some say the rise of chicken McNuggets in the late 70s stole the spotlight from their onion-flavored counterparts. Always in tune with changing taste, McDonald's shifted focus and gave onion nuggets a fond farewell. So if you ever find yourself nostalgic for the 70s and the funky flavors it brought to the fast food scene, raise a glass to onion nuggets. New chocolate mint milkshake, the new eggnog milkshake. McDonald's had this delightful surprise for folks during the holiday season back in the 80s, the eggnog shake. Picture yourself strolling into a McDonald's decked out in festive decor and instead of the usual chocolate or vanilla shakes, you're greeted with the option of an eggnog shake. Now, this wasn't your ordinary shake. Priced at around $1.49, the eggnog shake blended the traditional taste of eggnog with the creamy indulgence of a classic McDonald's milkshake. It was a treat that tantalized the taste buds, offering a unique twist on the familiar flavors of the holiday season. For those born in the 1970s, sipping on the eggnog shake wasn't just about enjoying a beverage. It was a nostalgic journey back to the family gatherings and the warm embrace of holiday cheer. With its creamy vanilla soft serve ice cream, the shake was infused with the rich spice goodness of eggnog, creating a perfect fusion of tradition and indulgence. Picture yourself holding that McDonald's cup adorned with a swirl of whipped cream and a sprinkle of nutmeg, creating a visual and flavorful spectacle. It wasn't just a shake, but a sip of tradition, a temporary escape into the festive spirit encapsulated in every drop. As with many good things in life, 
the eggnog shake had a short-lived presence on the McDonald's menu. As the holiday season ended, so did the demand for this festive concoction. If you know, you eat the new fruit walnut salad from McDonald's. Yeah. It's fresh apples and grapes, low-fat yogurts. Back in the mid-2000s, McDonald's tried something different by adding the fruit and walnut salad to its menu. They wanted to give folks a healthier choice with fresh fruits and crunchy walnuts, all tossed together with a yogurt dressing. Sounds fancy. So you have this salad with red and green apples, grapes, and that yogurt dressing creating a mix of sweet and savory flavors. And the best part? It was only about $3.29. Not too shabby for a healthier option at a fast food joint. McDonald's was known for its burgers and fries, but throwing in a fruit and nut salad was a bit of a curveball. People who grew up loving their classic burgers weren't sure what to make of it. The fruit and walnut salad didn't catch on despite the initial curiosity. Maybe folks weren't ready to trade their Big Macs for a fruit bowl. And it probably didn't help that dealing with perishable items like a salad wasn't the easiest for a fast food place. It's interesting though, because back then, many fast food joints were trying to cater to what people wanted to eat as their taste changed. Even though the fruit and walnut salad didn't stick around, it reminds us of when McDonald's experimented with healthier options. Sometimes you've got to try things out to see what works. Topping the bread with barbecue style chicken or chicken teriyaki? No. How about the pepperoni pizza? In 1993, McDonald's rolled out something called McStuffins. They were like your regular sandwiches, but with a twist. They came in this cool tube-like packaging that made them easy to carry around and kept them warm and fresh until you were ready to chow down. It was kind of a funky addition to the usual fast food routine. These McStuffins weren't your typical burgers. They had options like ham and cheese, turkey and bacon, and a veggie with grilled veggies. And they weren't breaking the bank either. Priced at around $2.99 each, they were aiming to be a heartier and more varied meal option for folks dropping by Mickey D's. The marketing spiel was about how convenient the packaging was and the different fillings offered, trying to appeal to a wider crowd. But despite the initial excitement, McStuffins faced some hurdles. The tube packaging, while cool, could have made things a bit tricky behind the scenes. Storing and serving these sandwiches might have slowed down the whole fast food process. Plus, the novelty of the tubes might not have kept people interested for the long haul. In the end, McStuffins didn't stick around on the McDonald's menu for too long, and we're not entirely sure why they pulled the plug. Some say it could have been the challenges in handling the unique packaging, or maybe folks just returned to the classic burger and fries. It is possible that the McStuffins and the McDLT were part of a larger trend of unconventional McDonald's offerings that didn't quite make the cut. Stay tuned to learn more. The burger stays hot on the McOven side. And the McFridge side keeps the lettuce and tomato cool and crisp. Introduced in 1984, the McDonald's McDLT was a burger with a mission to keep things fresh and crispy. The secret? The packaging. They served it up in this two-sided styrofoam container, the hot beef patty on the bottom, and the cool lettuce, tomato, cheese, pickles, and sauce on the top, all ready to meet at the moment of munching. The idea was to maintain the freshness of the cool stuff while keeping the patty hot and juicy. At that time, the fast food world was all about trying new things to stand out, and the McDLT was McDonald's shot at being different. This burger wasn't your regular cheap eats. It cost around $1.49, a bit more than the other McDonald's burgers. But you were paying for the fancy packaging and the feeling of a premium dining experience. Their marketing pitch was all about freshness and customization with that catchy jingle you get a lot, lot more with the hot, hot side. The McDLT was a hit. People loved the concept. But there's always a but, as it faced criticism for its not-so-environmentally friendly styrofoam packaging. This eventually led to its shutdown in 1991. Even though the burger was a hit with the crowd, the whole styrofoam situation wasn't flying in the era of growing environmental concerns. And that was the end of the McDLT. Back in the 70s, McDonald's decided to shake things up and try something different. They introduced the McSoup. You heard that right, a bowl of soup of the Golden Arches. They attempted to offer something warm and comforting alongside the usual burgers. The McSoup was priced reasonably, 
aiming to attract folks looking for a change from the classic burger and fries routine. Some people like the idea of a quick soup, especially when the weather got chilly. But not everyone was on board. Some customers felt a bit out of place in a fast food joint. But here's the kicker. The McSoup faced some serious hurdles. McDonald's is all about speed, right? Well, making and serving hot soup didn't exactly fit into that fast-paced vibe. The challenges of keeping the soup consistently good and hot probably played a part in why it didn't stick around for long. On top of that, folks were used to McDonald's being the go-to for burgers, and the McSoup just couldn't carve out a spot for itself in the fast food scene. People were expecting burgers and fries, not a steaming bowl of soup. So in the end, the McSoup had its moment, but it couldn't quite become a McDonald's mainstay. Meanwhile, it turned out that the McHot Dog followed the same trend. McDonald's took a surprising turn and threw hot dogs into the mix with the McHot Dog in 1995. The idea of serving hot dogs didn't sit well initially with the big boss, Ray Kroc, but they gave it a shot. It was priced at $1.50 and was supposed to be a classic American favorite, complete with the usual suspects like ketchup, mustard, and relish. But introducing hot dogs at McDonald's? That raised some eyebrows. McDonald's is all about burgers and fries, and adding a hot dog seemed like they were stepping out of their comfort zone. People had this solid expectation of what a McDonald's meal should be, and a hot dog didn't quite fit the bill. Plus, hot dogs are tricky. Everyone's got their way of liking them. With so many regional variations, creating a hot dog that pleased everyone was a tall order. The McHot Dog didn't catch on. Sales were kind of meh, and it didn't become a permanent thing on the menu. Why did they take it off? Well, it was a mix of things. Not many folks were asking for it. It added extra challenges in the already busy McDonald's kitchens. And most importantly, McDonald's is all about sticking to what they do best, burgers and fries. So the McHot Dog had its moment in the spotlight, but it didn't quite earn a permanent spot in the McDonald's lineup. I E R S hyphen. In 1968, McDonald's rolled out its legendary apple pie, a game changer. Served in a crispy fried shell, this dessert hooked everyone with its heavenly combo of sweet spiced apple filling tucked inside a crunchy crust. And get this, it was just 15 cents a pop in the early days. The fried apple pie became a total hit, a go-to treat for McDonald's fans. The secret sauce? Well, it was all about deep frying those pies. That gave them this golden brown crunch on the outside, perfectly balancing the warm, gooey goodness inside. It was the stuff of dessert dreams. But you know how it goes. Times change. In the early 90s, people started leaning toward healthier eating, and McDonald's noticed. So they decided to give the apple pie a makeover. Out with the deep frying and in with the baking. Some places switched in the late 80s, others in the early 90s. The new baked version had a lighter, flakier crust catering to the health-conscious crowd. Now, while the baked pie aimed to keep up with the times, many of us still hold a soft spot for the original fried apple pie. It's a piece of McDonald's history that brings back all those nostalgic and indulgent vibes. Do you ever wonder what happened to the McLean Deluxe? Well, stick around for the untold narrative. On a great burger taste with a lot less fat, only McDonald's responded. New McLean Deluxe. In 1991, McDonald's tried to jump on the health-conscious bandwagon with the McLean Deluxe. Priced around $2.49, this burger was supposed to be the healthier choice by adding a seaweed extract called carrageenan to the beef patties, aiming to cut down on fat while keeping the flavor intact. The idea of a healthy burger sounded good, especially as people became more mindful about what they ate. But, and there's always a but, the McLean Deluxe didn't quite hit the mark. The seaweed extract messed with the patty's texture and taste, and customers had mixed feelings. Some thought it lacked that juicy goodness you'd expect from a classic McDonald's burger. Despite the effort to give folks a lighter fast food option, the McLean Deluxe didn't become the talk of the town. It turns out that people weren't looking for a diet burger when they rolled up to McDonald's. The compromise in taste and that McDonald's was more about indulgence than diet food for most folks led to its eventual exit. In 1996, the McLean Deluxe bid farewell 
and McDonald's returned to focusing on what they do best, their core product.